excited about today, though, because today my guest is Earl Mocker, who's the former editor of the Sun Sentinel and is currently a Lighthouse Point City Commissioner, and today I get to ask the questions. Okay, fire instead away. Instead of the other way around, and you better answer them. I'll answer any question you have. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to do probably a couple segments with Earl. First, we're going to talk to him about what it's like being a Lighthouse Point City Commissioner, being an elected a, a public servant now, after having been on the other side watching public service for 30 years. How do you find, first of all, you, you were appointed to the Lighthouse City Commission when? That's right. I was appointed about three weeks ago to fill the unexpired term of Chip Lamarca, who is now one of your colleagues on the county board. So it's been probably three, four weeks since I've been sworn in and I only have a couple of weeks left because, until the election. Because you decided not to run. I'm not going to run. I made that clear before I was even appointed. Uh, the filing ended on January 10th, which was really a little premature for me to consider it. So I uh, really had no intention of running, but I'm enjoying filling this unexpired term and we'll see what the future holds. Is it something you'd always wanted to do? No, it's not something I always wanted to do. I've been on the other side of watchdog of government for more than 30 years at the Sun Sentinel and then even before then as a, a reporter covering county boards, city commissions, water districts, everything, always from that perspective. So I thought viewing it as a participant rather than an observer would be an interesting experience and it has been. In what way? Well, you're involved in, engaged in setting policy for the city, working with city officials, learning the ways of the city, finding out a little more about how all of those things function at the on the behalf of the residents of that city. So it's a very different kind of responsibility. I found that when I got to the county commission, even after having been a Brown resident for 30 some odd years, there was so much I didn't know about what the county did. Well, no question. The, the mayor, Fred Shore, suggested that I spend a couple of days and learn about the city. So I spent time at the police department, the fire department, parks and recreation, uh, public works. Those are areas that I really didn't pay that much attention to as a resident of the city. So it's been an eye-opener, it's been enjoyable, and, and the, the dedication and loyalty of the employees of that city is just amazing to me. And I never would have known that had I not been a city commissioner. How many residents do you have at Lighthouse? 10,000. Okay. Uh, so it's a small city within a very large metropolitan area, but a relatively small city within that area. In fact, a very small city. Um, in the northeast corner of Broward County. Correct? Right, the northeast county, uh, not northeast part. It's just south of Deerfield and a little east of Pompano. It's beautiful, though. It's a beautiful city. It's a very nice city. It's a very, it's a very nice hometown feel. What, what I also have found at the county is that the staff often toils in obscurity right. with very little um, very little praise, very little impetus to, to really, I mean, and they do an amazing job at the county, but they're an anonymous, right. and they do, such, they do the work of the county. And most of what you find is people being critical. They're upset about something. They, uh, code enforcement is a huge issue because somebody's not maintaining their property correctly in this era of foreclosures and those kinds of things. It's a real dilemma and people have a lot of pride in their city and they want to see it done correctly. They want to see their public officials engaged in the city and, and care about the city. Now, um, Lighthouse Point is a city manager, form of government? It's a strong mayor oh, form strong of government. Mayor. Right, there is a city administrator, but it's a, a strong mayor of government. And the mayor's elected? The mayor's elected, citywide. right. Citywide. Citywide. All the city commissioners are at large. So you do have districts you represent, but there are, the election is at large. And they have, they're having an election in March? In March. To it will be the municipal election, which will fill my seat. There's two candidates running. Both are really good people. Both are very qualified. It'll be a very good election to see who wins. So you've been there a month. Been there a month. Still yeah. new. Right? Um, yeah. Very new. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. I like it. I like being involved in things. I like, I like being the editor of the Sun Sentinel. I like being engaged and participating at some level. But of course, as the editor, I could not get involved in any kind of government because it was a conflict of interest. So this has been my first opportunity. So I joined the Exchange Club. I've been involved in some uh, projects for the Broward Community Foundation. I'm on the board of Ambassadors of the United Way and now a city commissioner. These are all things that I couldn't do as the editor of the Sun Sentinel. And I'm also doing some consulting, uh, mostly in South America and the Caribbean, for other newspapers going through the kind of 
trauma that uh, we experienced in the Sun Sentinel with the change of media. And there's been a huge change. Which huge I change. Get to right. in the next segment, but I did want to mention that you, you are uh, Mocker Media Consulting. You're going around the world. Around the world. Right? Not around the world. Mostly in the Caribbean and, and Latin America. I was very active in the Inter-American Press Association. In fact, I was the president of that organization, which is an organization dedicated to uh, going into fragile democracies and campaigning for a free and open press. And I've been involved in that organization for more than 16 years. So during my association, I got to know a lot of uh, newspaper owners, editors, managers. So anywhere I can help where they need some uh, exposure to new media and newsroom consolidation and integration, uh, I'll go in and work with them to integrate their newsroom into a, a multimedia organization instead of a, a one-dimensional print newsroom. So that we don't um, get you in trouble with any potential conflicts, you're allowed to have dual employment as a lighthouse and commissioner? Well, yes, as, as long as there's no conflict, and I, I know of no conflict, so, uh, and I filed my financial statement and declared all the things that I have to declare, so. So you should, filled out a financial disclosure. Yes, I did. Which every elected official has to do in the right. state of Florida, and that's the first time you've ever done that. First time I've ever even seen one of those. <laughs> And it wasn't as painful as I thought. It was basically just to indicate what, uh, where you get your income. There's, it, it, I found it to be a fairly easy thing to do. It is, it is. But it's one of those things that I think most people don't know we do. Right. Um, there's a lot. And of I have no problem with that. I fully understand that you know that public officials need to be held accountable. You do. I do. Uh, as a as a, an official, and we should be absolutely completely transparent in everything that we do. It comes with the territory. But I, I think that we are transparent. And I think county government is very, in, in particular, county government is very transparent. All our procurements are done in the open. All of our meetings are done in the open, unlike the legislature. Right. Which means, you know, I see that Rick Scott met with three legislators at the, at the executive right. mansion, the governor's mansion, and did the sunshine, and they talked about the budget. Um, as a news person, that would... Well, I, I don't think Rick Scott is the poster child for transparency uh, in any way, shape, or form. I think the county commission has got a good deal of criticism, and correctly so, because of the sometimes the, the feeling of entitlement that everybody's been there so long, they've got all these connections, and I think sometimes county commissioners and other public officials forget who they are responsible to and they sort of become ingrained in the process. I think the best of intentions are there in most cases, but I think after a long time in public office, some of that can happen and everybody needs to be careful about that. I think though that it brings you back down to earth when you go to Publix and you shop and nobody knows who the hell you are. Right, and there's a lot of that. I was just in the Keeper's Day Parade. We had a parade through the city of Lighthouse Point and my wife was saying, these people don't even know who you are. You haven't been a commissioner for, you know, a month even. And I said, I doubt if they know who most of the commissioners are. Which is is really, it's terrible. Though. Well, it, it's a, a shame and frankly the media doesn't do a very good job of making it better in terms of keeping people informed, but there's really not much of an appetite by the public to find out more about it, and, and that's sad. All right, well, we're going to continue this um, in the next segment. We're going to go from Earl Mocker, White House Point City Commissioner. We're going to go from Commissioner Mocker to former editor of the Sun Sentinel, media right. specialist and consultant Earl Mocker. When we come back, we'll be right back.